Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and create some 3D lines or 2D lines, whatever suits your taste, to revolve around our logo in After Effects. So basically, it's, it's just a logo reveal, or you can do whatever you want. You can do this for like a promo piece or something like that. Uh, but essentially, we're going to go ahead and create some objects that will revolve around the uh, front of our logo to the back. And it'll appear that our objects are in the front of our logo, which reveal it, reveal it, and then it goes around to the back and it'll be right behind our logo. So we'll be doing a little bit of Cinema 4D and integrating it within After Effects. So I'm going to show you guys how to do all that. It's a great tutorial. You know, it's not really my type of style because I don't like doing 3D stuff, you know, but... This is a great tutorial just to understanding how uh, Z depth works and you know, doing some Z passing. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go uh, jump into the tutorial and do that. So we can't really do this in After Effects, you know, there's not really a, an intuitive way to, you know, have some lines go, uh, you know, come around our logo and, you know, have it work out like with the lines go behind the logo. So we have to kind of use Cinema 40. So Basically, I already have you know our logo, text, and some background in here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to Cinema 4D. Here we are in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna go ahead and create like a new project here. And uh, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and click this little window at the top here, which will bring up four different windows here. And if you're new to Cinema 4D, don't worry, you will be able to follow along with this. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pretty uh, specific with this, so. No worries if you're new to it. So what I need to do is go ahead to go to the, like this drop down over here and click on Bezier. And we're going to go ahead and use our top window, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of this. And there we have that. Maybe I'll zoom out even more. And we're going to go ahead and draw a path. So what we're going to do is maybe we'll click down here. You know, maybe we'll go ahead and click another straight line over here or something like that. And then we'll go ahead and, you know, uh, click at the top here and kind of like, start creating a loop and I'll go ahead and click over here and then maybe you know I'll click like right here and then we'll go ahead and continue to draw our loop like this so now we kind of have a nice little loop um, and if I go back to our selection tool here I can maybe select this point and I can maybe move it out a little bit so now we have this beautiful loop here and I'll go back to our perspective window and I'll zoom out and that's a lot right there but that's okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to back to uh, where we clicked our Bezier uh, mask before, and we're going to click on Circle. And then we're going to go to our NURBS window, and we're going to click on Sweep NURBS. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop Circle in there, and also the spline right underneath the circle. So now we have like the cylinder thing here. It looks pretty cool. Um, but we're going to go ahead and refine this. So what we're going to do is click on the circle, and we can uh, make the uh, radius smaller by lowering the radius, as you see, like this. And it's up to you how big you want it to be. And also, if you want this to be like more, I guess, a 2D line rather than just a cylinder, what you can do is under plane, you can go ahead and set it to ZY. And it'll kind of like look like a you know 2D line, which you know I think it looks pretty cool. But for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it at um, XY. So there you have that. And then we'll go ahead and click on the sweep NURBS. And right here, if we increase the start growth, as you can see, we can kind of start controlling you know, how long this line is. So pretty cool. But uh, let's go ahead and check out the fillet caps. So if you go under caps and you can kind of maybe mess with the fillet caps if you want. I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, you can mess with the radius to kind of see what you'll get with that. But I'm going to keep it at just at five centimeters each. And then uh, we can kind of maybe start animating this and, you know, start creating our loop. Um, so what we'll do is we will go ahead and set the start growth to 100%. And then we'll go ahead and maybe move forward to like maybe 10 frames here. And I'll increase the timeline by increasing the number of frames our timeline will have. And that should be okay. And then what I'll do is I'll click the auto keyframes button and then I'll also click a keyframe right there. And we'll move forward in time to maybe like 90 seconds or so. Or sorry, 90 frames. And we'll go ahead and under start growth, we'll go ahead and put that to 0%. And then maybe we'll move forward in time a little bit, maybe to 100 frames. And we'll put the end uh, growth to 0%. So now... We kind of have this. And if we want this to be a little bit longer, we can go ahead and push out the end growth keyframe a little bit. So now, you know, basically in our animation, we'll only see that line and it'll kind of go ahead and animate for us along this path. So it's, I think it's pretty cool. So now we kind of need to get into position and go ahead and create more lines. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll kind of position our, you know, um, 
perspective here to where I want the lines to be so, or at least how we see the lines in our comp. So I'll probably be a little bit closer. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so now if we take a look here, so it just comes in from around the back. Hmm. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just rotate this a little bit like this. It's all about the perspective here, how you want this to come in. So if we take a look at this. So now I'll come in from the side that way and then go around and come out that way. So yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, I think it's pretty cool. So let me go ahead and what I'll do is I'll go up to our camera button over here and create a camera and this will kind of like lock us into position. And if I want, I can kind of maybe get even a better perspective here. Oh, I didn't mean to keyframe that. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks pretty cool. So now what we can do is maybe start texturing this and then uh, going ahead and creating more copies. So what I'll do is I'll double click down here in this little empty space and it'll add a texture. And what I can do is, you know, maybe we can keep it at white or maybe we can uh, set it to like a blue or, you know, whatever you guys want. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And then what I'll do is click on the basic tab here and I will check the reflection and we'll go to the reflection tab and we'll go ahead and lower the brightness. Uh, it's about 20, about 20 percent. And then I'll go to texture and I will click on Fresnel and we'll go ahead and lower the mix strength to maybe like 10 percent or so. So it'll be very like minimum and I think it looks pretty cool. And then we can go ahead and just drag this onto our uh, sweep nerb. And, you know, there you have that. Boom. So now uh, we can go ahead and start creating more copies of this. And what I can do to create more copies is basically just copy our sweep nerves and paste it. So then maybe what I can do is maybe go to the, the spline here and go to the coordinates and maybe we can position this up a little bit. And as you see, we kind of have this going around. So now we have two lines. Looks pretty cool. And maybe, you know, I don't know if those are too big or whatever, but who knows. And what we can do is maybe duplicate our texture and we can uh, basically change the color of the new texture to like green or something. And I can go ahead and apply it to our new sweep nerves. And if I want to offset this a little bit, what I can do is go ahead and click on the sweep nerves. And here's all of our keyframes. What I can do is select all of our keyframes and maybe I can move it over. So now they'll be offset and it looks pretty cool. And you know, once again, I can go ahead and maybe duplicate it again by copying and pasting it, go to the spline and I can change the uh, Y position. Maybe like that. And then maybe duplicate the texture and you know, go ahead and create another color, maybe orange this time. And I'll just go ahead and apply that to the new one. And maybe we'll offset it by a little bit, the keyframes. Maybe we'll keep that right there. So it looks pretty cool so far. And you know, maybe we need to duplicate it a few more times and um, you know, once again, go ahead and continue to raise this up a little bit. You know, maybe create another color. This one, I'll just make it white and we'll offset it as well. So I'll be right back once I have plenty of copies. All right, so now I kind of have uh, a lot of copies here, a lot to work with, and it looks pretty good. I think we are just about done with our animation here in Cinema 4D. Uh, you can go ahead and you know adjust the sizes of these if you want, just by going back to the circle and uh, going to object and messing with the radius. You, know, you can create some interesting things. These might be a little too thick, but um, I personally think it'd be fine for this tutorial. You guys get the idea. Um, but uh, we need to go ahead and maybe add some lights here just because we're creating some shadows. So what I can do is maybe I'll pop out of this camera by kind of clicking this button here. Let me go ahead and move the camera to the top. And then we'll kind of zoom out and position ourselves. So what we'll do is we'll kind of go here and create like a light and we can kind of put that in the center here. And then what we can do now is kind of move out again and add another light and we can kind of put this in front of our lines. Maybe push it back. Okay. And then we can go back into our camera view and see what we got. So now everything looks, you know, pretty decently exposed. Let me take a quick look at that. Yeah, I'm not it's probably the top light might be a little too bright. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and position that up a little bit more. Put that way up there. Okay, so it should be okay. We should be good. Um, so basically uh, what we need to do now 
is we need to go to our render settings here at the top, which is this button here. And uh, basically, we need to go to multi-pass. And we need to click on the multi-pass tab right here. And we need to click on depth, which is right here at the bottom. And uh, we don't need to do anything else here because we're just going to bring this file right over to Cinema 4D. But uh, this is basically what it looks like right now. And it looks pretty cool. So, and the last thing we need to do before we go over to uh, After Effects, we need to jump out of our camera here and we need to set the depth of our camera basically. So what we'll do is click on the camera. We need to go ahead and jump over to Details over here. So we need to go ahead and click on Front Blur and Rear Blur as well. And so basically our Front Blur is going to be this little front box here. And where it says um, Map Rear Blur, we need to go ahead and increase the end to basically fit our entire animation. So kind of go here like that. And it's a very little box. It might be hard to see, but this is basically the box we're working with. And maybe I'll go ahead and increase that just by a little bit to be safe. And then the little front, uh, the uh, front map here, uh, we'll go ahead and increase the end as well. And we'll just go with the top there. So like five centimeters. So basically, uh, uh, just trust me to just do this. We'll talk about it a little bit later. We'll go ahead and pop right back into our camera. And actually, maybe we'll go back to the render settings. And where's this output? We'll go ahead and set this to uh, 1920 by 1080. And that's fine. Cool. All right. And we'll go ahead and save this file. Uh, and uh, basically, we'll go ahead and jump over to After Effects. And we need to import the file. And I named it something. 3D lines for tut. We'll bring that into After Effects and we'll bring it into our comp. And now we have our lines. What we need to do is we need to, where it says render settings, we need to go ahead and set that to standard final. So now I'll basically just uh, fit right into our project. And if we go ahead and take a look at this, if we go maybe uh, forward in time a little bit here, as you can see, the lines do not go behind our logo, but that's okay. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this layer and we're gonna put one of them right underneath everything above our background. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our top uh, Cinema 4D layer here and we're gonna, where it says multi-pass, we're gonna go ahead and click that checkbox and we're gonna click on set multi-pass. And we're gonna go ahead and set it to depth and we'll click okay. All right, and then we'll go here and we'll solo this layer so we can see what we're doing. And basically, uh, what we need to do is we need to make the, uh, what's the lows up here? We need to make the front portion of our lines white while we make the back portion of our lines black. So right now it's kind of inverted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of fixing here. We're gonna go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And we're basically just gonna go ahead and flip this chart so um, we'll take this bottom point here and we'll bring it to the top and we'll take this top point here and bring it to the bottom. So now we kind of have inverted this entire setup. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Effect, Color Correction, Exposure. All right, and maybe we'll go ahead and set the Gamma Correction down to like maybe 0 0.10. And then we'll go ahead and increase the Exposure by a little bit, maybe it's like about 2. So now we go ahead and scrub through this. We have like this very, you know, thin exposure setting here. So looks pretty good. And then what we'll do, let's go ahead and unsolo this layer. And then what we and then we'll go ahead and well once it auto saves. We'll go ahead and put it um, right on top of our logo here. And we'll go ahead to our logo track mat and we'll go ahead and set that to Luma inverted mat. So now uh, basically our lines were right in front of our logo. That looks pretty good. But if we go ahead and go back here or sorry, we go ahead and scrub to the front here. You'll see that our lines are right behind our logo now. So now our lines are completely revolving around our logo and that looks pretty cool. So um, that is really awesome. And you know, there's a quick way to create some lines in After Effects. So if we want, we can kind of maybe do like a linear transition for our logo. So I go to effect, you know, transition, linear wipe, or I can just cut it on. It all depends, uh, you know, how much you can see through our lines here. But I'll go ahead and set the wipe angle to 90 or negative 90 degrees. And we'll maybe, you know, go back a little bit here. Click the stopwatch for transition completion. Move forward in time, maybe by a little bit. 
and we'll set it to uh, 100% and I accidentally messed that up. So I'll hit U on my keyboard and I'll select both the keyframes here and I will right click and click on keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframe. And maybe I'll go on, move these keyframes back a little bit. So now our logo will reveal on as our lines uh, go by it. And then the lines will go behind our logo and it'll look pretty good. Um, and what's great about Cinema 40 is, or the Cinema 40 to After Effects workflow is that I can go back into uh, Cinema 40. And if I want, I can go ahead and maybe duplicate like a line here, copy and paste it and go to the spline and, you know, of course, move it up or down or whatever I want to do, I'll move it up. And maybe I'll set it to, like, green. I don't know, it seems like green's the color right now. Uh, move it down a little bit. Okay, and then what I can do is just save the project in here and then move right back over to After Effects and we let it load up for a second. Boom, we added our new line. So, we can, so now we can go back into Cinema 4D and change colors or add more lines or just make some adjustments. And this workflow is amazing. Um, and now we have some beautiful lines that go around our object. So, and after a quick render, this is what we have. And it looks really awesome. I added a little bit of a scale in to create some animation, but overall, I think it looks really awesome. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please drop a comment down below or hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And if you found this video helpful, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials just like this. And guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you soon.